I want to talk to John Miller now, joining our group here uh, in New York, CNN chief law enforcement and intelligence analyst uh, on this historic evening. So 34 felony charges uh, convicted on all counts, John. Um, and, and, you know, obviously no one knows the, the system here uh, as, as well as you in New York and how this is handled. So what's this, what happens now? So we are in an otherworldly case in that this is all unprecedented involving a former president of the United States. But what would normally happen and should happen here is uh, that they will prepare a probation report uh, that will come with sentencing, um, not recommendations, but, you know, findings of the probation report that the judge will take into account when deciding when and how to sentence uh, Donald Trump. And things that they go into are interviewing the defendant, interviewing the members of the family, thinking of the impact of the crime. But key to this would be, um, does the, does the defendant uh, express remorse? Is he likely to reoffend? And that's where it's going to be tricky. Right. Well, he's an innocent man, as he says. There's not going to be remorse. Um, that's, not, that's not how he's going to go, because he says he didn't do it. Um, but what happens? We were going through some of the things, right? So all of a sudden, you're, you know, he's convicted of the felonies. That sentencing, he's formerly a convicted felon. Um, I know he's allowed to go now without bail. But are there restrictions on him now? I mean, being a convicted felon is a life-changing thing in America. Now, um, as of 2021, there's a change in New York state law, so he will be able to vote in New York. But he's By the way, not a New York... change that I am sure he would have excoriated and <laughs> oh, did yes. excoriate and, and now benefits and, him. And probably but... did. Yep. Uh, but he would be able to vote in New York, but he's a Florida resident. But in Florida, they say if you weren't sentenced to jail in New York, you can vote in Florida even if you're a convicted felon somewhere else. So he can vote. He cannot get a license to be a barber, a security guard, a private eye, but questions will be raised about his ability to um, have a real estate license or a liquor license, which, when you own hotels, uh, or crucial trade in, in real both cases, both of those are crucial for him. Right. Um, and now, what about as this goes? And I know there's this appeals process, and it may not happen before the election. There's there's real questions about the timing and how firm this is by election day. But does a convicted felon get access to classified documents if uh, one is? president because a felon could be president. So with presidents and members of Congress, everything's different. I had to go through a background check, get a top secret clearance. The president gets that clearance by virtue of the office. Now, a former president doesn't get to take that with him. It's up to the sitting president. So, for instance, if Donald Trump is reelected, he will be not only entitled to all classified material, he will be able to classify and declassify at will. However, if he doesn't get reelected, uh, whoever does, let's say Joe Biden, um, would be able to say he can have classified material or he can't. And right. as of January 6th, President Biden barred Trump from all classified briefings. Okay, but, but just to be clear, if he wins and he is a fully convicted felon, he still gets access. Because the president of the United States <laughs> doesn't go through a background check they get their access by virtue of the office. Right, and a convicted felon can be president. I mean, these are the moments you're in, right, Ryan, where you just say, wow. I mean, some of these, these are just things that clearly um, nobody foresaw back when these rules were made. Right. Um, <laughs> but uh, it does put the United States in a category of other advanced democracies that have indeed prosecuted former heads of state mm -hmm. and survived. As democracy. Okay, please. This is this is a good. This is optimistic, and bring everyone out. So you're. So yeah. yeah so there's a part of me um, that, as you expressed it, sad about the day. What it means that we have the travesty of a person being found convicted as a former president of a crime to get elected. So just mm -hmm. to understand the gravity of that. But there are many democracies around the world. Um, right now in Israel, the prime minister and the president and the president before have been prosecuted. Mm -hmm. France elsewhere, uh, South Africa, um, Pakistan, mm -hmm. uh, just around the world, and they survive. Now, that doesn't mean that we'll survive in the same form that we're in today. I do think that we're still in a very yeah. tense moment in terms of the level of political violence that's possible in the country as well. So this is still a very right. dangerous point for us because of where we now well, are. Yeah, in still terms on a razor's of the, edge, but the, the, the fact is that, they, that there is a precedent for, for getting past it. And, yeah, so uh, the fact that our system works that way, I think, is positive. And it also worked... I just want to say something about the jurors, because it was yep. also the first thing that uh, the DA Bragg said. The jurors are a cross-section of Manhattanites, but they also come from other states, Ohio, Oregon, California. And statistically speaking, they were probably Trump supporters on that jury. And people who, you know, saw the voir dire process of the selection of the jury, they have a cross-section of people and a cross-section of news sources that they go to, et cetera. Right. That might still come out in the coming days. That will be an understanding that the jurors did include people from across the political spectrum. And when they had mm -hmm. to face their duty as jurors to see whether or not the facts meant beyond a reasonable doubt he committed the crimes, 
They unanimously felt he, he committed the crime. And, and Terry, just to that moment, it, when the, this was read out today, I know that you've described it as every single voice was firm and strong and, and, and confident. Uh, but, but what did the jury look? Did any of them look at Trump? Did they respond? Well, let's go back for one second. When the judge came out and he said, first, it's 4.30, we're going to let them go. Then he came back out and he said, I have a note. We have a verdict. And they need 30 more minutes to write Fill out, out the, forms, the form. Right. When he said, we have a verdict, of course, you know, the jury wasn't there. But all of us did a collective... <gasps> and the judge actually had to say, when the verdict is read, it has to be quiet in the room. But that jury, when they came in and that verdict was read, that four person stood up, he was firm, he said guilty. When we heard that first count say guilty, then he went through all 34, all guilty, and they were strong and firm, and the judge thanked them. Uh, Mark, a final word to you on, on your view of this jury. A, a, a good jury. I told you, Erin, that I thought it was going to be difficult to get a conviction because I thought they might hang. I'm glad that they took the time they took, that they went through what they went through, because like many verdicts, if you're going to have one and you have to stand by it, you want them to have done the right job. You want them to have taken their yeah. time. You want them to have done it in a good way. I think they protected themselves by taking the time they did. Voting on, guilty on all 34 was important as well because they weren't compromising. My concern, again, on the appeal is this judge did not protect his jury enough to protect the conviction right. from an appeal. On the, on, the, on the sequester issue I know you've raised uh, yes. before. All right, I want to bring in Danny Freeman now because he is in the key swing state of Pennsylvania. And now voters are starting to learn, right? It's been a couple hours here, Danny. People are starting to hear it, have a chance to have it sink in that Trump has been convicted on all 34 counts. So what are you hearing, Danny? Well, and I'll do you one better, Aaron. We actually broke the news to at least one of the voters that we spoke wow. with out here uh, that former President Trump had been convicted of these charges. Uh, I'll tell you, not only, obviously, is Pennsylvania uh, one of the most important battleground states on the map, but we're in Bucks County right now, uh, one of the infamous, or rather famous, I should say, suburban areas outside of Philadelphia that is normally known to be a swing area, uh, going to be crucial to certainly President Biden if he wants to win Pennsylvania. So that's why these voters are so important in this area. I want you to take a listen. We spoke to three people on camera. Uh, it's interesting. Most of those people that we spoke to on camera, uh, they were uh, supportive of Trump getting convicted, but they uh, processed the news in different ways. Take a listen. I feel like it's kind of like Teflon. There's been a lot of things attached to him that haven't really stuck, but this is one where they went through the process. Um, you know, we have to trust the courts. I think everybody needs to abide by the law, and if they're not going to, then they should be pay the consequences. I really hope that people spend time not saying whoopee or gotcha or great or entertainment, but feeling deeply saddened that they knowingly uh, participated in a process in which we elected somebody like this. So you can hear there, Aaron, a number of different viewpoints. I should say, though, that we also spoke with some folks, uh, although off camera, who were more sympathetic to the former president, saying, listen, uh, one woman, I should say, said to me, listen, I'm not his biggest fan, but I thought that 34 counts, that seemed egregious, especially in this political environment. So we'll keep mm -hmm. out here uh, speaking to voters, but that's some of the initial reaction to this enormous news today.